What up guys, my name is Chris. This is Wheelhouse Trading and welcome to the Wheelhouse. Okay, um, want to go over a few things. What Jerome Powell said without saying. So in my opinion, which I believe that all of Wall Street and smart money agrees with, um, is that the, the speech that he had, uh, the public conference, was for the public, okay? People that are mainly not in the stock market, people like my mother, okay? We're working on inflation. You know, they don't understand Fed speak, but Wall Street and smart money does understand Fed speak. And what he said without saying was a signal. Remember many videos back, uh, way back before all this, I was I made a video about recessions and it was actually, I think last year that I made it. And I had said, when the Fed um, either raises interest rates three times or says that they're going to, there has always been a top impending recession afterwards. It's a signal to Wall Street saying it without saying it, it's a signal. Well, the second big signal showed up yesterday and I'm just gonna kind of break it down. It may sound opinion based, but I have the track record to prove that I've been right the whole time about all of it. In fact, if you just go listen to my last three or four videos, it breaks down everything that is the Fed playbook and he just confirmed all those videos of exactly what I was talking about. So just, just pay attention to the videos, like it, subscribe, you know, listen to it. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to help you guys out. So first of all, um, I'm sure a lot of you have not read the book. Um, I think it's called psychological warfare <laughs> and what it is, is it's, um, like interrogation tactics that the FBI and the CIA use. And it has to do with like body language and pantomimes and all kinds of different things. Well, when I was watching him, you know, I could just see right off the bat, um, BS, 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 BS. So it's, it's everything I said for the last seven, eight months is basically what they're doing. And in the end, some of the major things that you have to think about are they do want unemployment to come down. It's their mandate to have people employed, but that's not their focus right now. Their focus is inflation. But what they said and didn't say, but gave a major hint was, we focus on headline inflation. Headline inflation has to do with supply. Then they later said, we don't have any control over supply. So they're basing their data off of half of the information. All they can control is demand. They can't control supply, yet they're using the data from the supply side headline. Core focuses on demand. Headline focuses on supply. They're focusing on supply, but then they admitted they can't control supply. So they can't control when more signs go in the yard for real estate. That's supply. They can't control commodities coming out of you know, foreign countries um, like China with the COVID lockdown or Russia with the war, okay? Supply. Um, so I got a whole bunch of, I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we're kind of winging it with half of the information. And um, he, he definitely is signaling we're going into a recession. He's saying um, that we should be from where we're at now at 86 percent interest or excuse me inflation down to four or 4.1 by 2024 let me tell you something never once in history has there ever been a two percent drop in one year to inflation without inducing a recession so 2024 is a year and a half away and he's going to come down four percent say so if you do um you know really aggressive and it comes down uh two in one year and two in the next that's always been a recession, okay? And when the unemployment goes up, we're, you know, that's, that's just part of the deal. First, it's pull the liquidity out because we have inflation. We need people to spend less. Notice how he kept talking about all the things I've been talking about in my video. Consumer spending, demand, real estate. These were all topics he brought up. Inflation, federal fund rate, 
Um, you know, and, and what have I said? They need to crash the stock market. They need to crash the crypto market. They need to pull liquidity out of the market so that they are able to control demand because they can't control supply. I've been saying it over and over. And then he came out and said pretty much the same thing. Um, he really fumbled, but I think that he did that on purpose to let everybody know uh, in Wall Street that there will be a much, you know, another leg lower. So we did have a rally. The rally is most likely, in my opinion, because um, it was leaked early uh, from, I think, Goldman Sachs, maybe Bank of America, Wall Street Journal, and CNBC were all involved. And it leaked, I believe, on Monday after we got the Friday read of the high inflation. It got leaked early, so there was a big sell-off on Monday, so it got priced in that there was going to be a 0.75 or even 100 basis point hike. Then it came out at 0.75. And so that extra quarter point that was priced in on the consensus, if it was a hundred basis hike, got, got put back in as a rally. That's just the way the markets work, guys. It's consensus, I always say this, consensus is never wrong. It shows up in the trend, the momentum. It's just the way it is. Consensus is right. Like It's like 9.99. There's only like one tenth that it's wrong. It's, it's weird how the, the market overall with everybody involved, the consensus is correct. It's a leading indicator, okay? Now, just want to show you in the Discord over here, I'm going to show you um, just as the words were coming out of his mouth, what I was saying to my Jedis, okay? And, and I'll show you an alert as well, okay? I, I, we're not going to read everybody's things here, but we'll start right here. Look at, you see the time when they were talking about it. Look at him deflect. Are you hearing this? He's literally saying without saying we need to cut jobs. What did I say? Fed playbook. His stance is, we just don't know. Oh, God. Zero confidence. I'm trying to get out of positions while I'm up. And then, of course, he, he over-talks. He, when he gets nervous, he, he keeps talking. When nobody's asking questions, he goes on and on. Um, uh, I'm up pretty big on the day, but I don't expect them to last. Um, talk. These numbers don't make any sense. Um, numbers talking about higher unemployment, slowing growth, slower demand. Yeah, this is a big signal, okay? Uh, somebody asked about crypto and I said, I don't know, crypto's never really been through a recession, so it's a little different. Um, let's kind of speed it up here. Um, I said, guys, don't trip, just day trade. Holding poses extra danger in my opinion right now. Um, I wrote supply will be a big component to how fast inflation comes down. It's true. We're gonna need to watch yield curves. We're gonna need to watch supply, okay? Um, he says, I say supply will be a big component to how fast inflation comes down. And one of the members says, that's largely China's zero COVID policy though, right? And yes, that is part of it because it's part of supply. And I said, yes, and homes, commodities, stuff like that. So when he says we base our data off headline inflation, that means supply, which he admitted they have no control over. Core inflation shows demand. So he carefully worded things to Wall Street so that they will know to pull more liquidity out of markets. That's how I read it. That's the Fed playbook. Letting them know this as that rally was happening and as he was talking, we were selling in the green because we knew that it was going to be that way on Thursday. What the markets like is that they price things in ahead of time and then got some guidance, which markets love. The consensus we just talked about, okay? I also think markets like a sharper rate hike and less time of inflation period based on their hopeful guidance. Guys, it's hopeful guidance, okay? The way this thing is going to play out is not the way that he is saying it's going to play out. A point, I told you guys this in the other videos too, a 0.75 basis hike is, is not doing the deal. Like, you have to jack it up and really slow us down and throw us in a recession if you really want to get inflation down. There's, it's not going to be a soft landing. Um, you know, it, we're going to be in this inflationary environment for a long, long time. These things, if you don't, it's good. It's good that they're doing the rate increases, okay? And it, it's good because demand is slowing and employment will go up and real estate will, it, it will get inflation down over time. But that's the key component that you have to understand. This is a, ton, a long process. This is going to be a process like I was talking about in my last couple of videos. Okay. Now, he also mentioned real estate in a positive light 
but that will change when supply changes, which they can't control. Again, why I put list of my house up uh, for sale. And that's why I couldn't make a video yesterday is because I had uh, two people with proof of funds um, that hit my agent up and they, I, <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I worked all day in the market and then I had multiple uh, showings and um, yeah, so I couldn't get it done. But uh, I'm here for you today. So we will see what happens, but those numbers signal recession coming and that they are basically winging it with only half the data that they can control the demand side. I would expect more downtrend overall. This is me telling the guys in my group as the words are coming out of his mouth. While it's going green, saying it, okay? Um, so I would say that there was good and bad, but I see it as going down the exact road I thought we would. Those numbers make no sense for targets, okay? Plus, they are already showing signs of wanting to slow the labor market. Back to that book, um, Psychological Warfare. Did you see his pause, his stuttering, his fear, his, his like, he didn't want to answer those hard questions by all those people, uh, those reporters at the end in the press conference. It's very telling for me. And I even wrote in here somewhere, I said, Wall Street's not going to be buying this. Like, they're, we're in a rally right at this moment, which is great. Take it when you, as you can. But... You know they're not they're not going to be buying this. Um, okay, so what is this? Oh, uh, he's saying thanks for your guidance. I said, look, there's a lot of hidden messages in this public address. I'm going back through it for us. Don't worry, guys. I can see clearly what's going on. I know what is going to happen, the general timeline, and exactly how to play it. And then I kind of mentioned uh, one of the other Jedis. I said, but I do think that Boku brings up an interesting topic of re-rating and portfolio shift on quadruple witching that's coming up. Um, that's normal, but we may see commodities get sold a bit and large cap or lower value multiples getting bought up. Okay. Um, you know, long-term holding firms and funds. I mean, these, these are really good prices. You don't get a 20, 30% drop in markets often. I do think we are going lower. Um, I'll tell you where I think we're going. I have told you in multiple videos. I think we're going to the peak of COVID on the indexes, but now I'm starting to think we're actually going to go further down into that COVID peak um, because because I know where we're at in the Fed playbook, and we're at like we're at like 35 percent right now. Yeah. So if it's been seven months, it's you know you got a long road ahead of you and more down and and you know, I mean, 35% of just the, you know, the down. I think there's a lot more coming. Um, well, we'll see. We, it's, it's, it's hard to gauge, but by the time that the stock market starts, you know, it, it becomes really like low, low cost, low multiple, and there's a lot of value there. By the time that happens, there has to be multiple positive catalysts, like supply chain sh shocks need to slow, but that's a double-edged sword because if supply chain slow, you would think it's going to raise the market, but it's going to decelerate the earnings because everybody overordered glut, and now they have to cut their margins. And the only way to get their 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 balance sheet correct is by layoffs and cutting payroll. They're going to have to cut something because they they bought they had high shipping costs and they had high margin products higher than you know because of COVID and lockdowns and supply chains. They had to pay more. And they had to pay more shipping. So therefore, their product cost them more than it did years ago and that it will in the future. So they overordered at high prices. And as supply comes down, they're going to have to offload that product at maybe even a loss. And to offset that on the balance sheet and their revenues and earnings and things of that nature, they're going to you know, cut, cut payroll. This is what you do in a business when you have less demand. You don't need to be open as many hours. You don't need to you know, have all facilities at 24 hours. You don't need to order as much. Like these are just business things. You know, you're, if you don't have as much business, you're not going to have 50 people standing around or 5,000 people or 500,000 people standing around doing nothing. You're just not, you're going to cut payroll and offset your margins. That's just what you do in business. Like it doesn't matter if you own a little tiny two person vacuum shop or you own a mega company. That's just what you're going to do. You know that as a CEO, you just know that that's like CEO 101. So, yeah, that's coming. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay, the biggest thing, the biggest, excuse me, the biggest thing that funds have to comp contemplate is simply will companies still have big enough consumer demand to keep up earnings at these 
40 multiple ranges. Will, will people still be going out buying a lot of products as they're losing their job and their real estate is devaluing and their 401k is coming down? Historically, the answer is no. Okay. Um, that's really going to tell us where we're at. This next quarterly earnings to see if we have a mega like deceleration. I would definitely watch that. I would watch supply and I would watch yield curves um, right now at this, at this particular time. Um, so when supply side subsides, it's a double-edged sword. I just kind of went over this. It seems good, but because it's such a massive supply shock, we now have glut and companies have to offload high margin products for less margin. And the way they balance that is by cutting payroll layoffs. And guys, I'm not trying to be bearish. I'm just keeping it real. I've seen all this before. And right now I'm listening to these big guys on TV and they're all questioning the same stuff that I am. Okay. Um, let's see here. Okay. So then I, I had made a, I had made an alert this morning for everybody. And I actually put it in the general chat too. I said, hello, if you haven't been reading my comments in the Jedi chat, you should after Jerome Powell's speech, quick summary, that speech was made for the public. Okay. People that are not in the stock or crypto market typically, okay? However, there were big signals to smart money that we are going into a recession and markets most likely will make lower legs. There has never been a time in history where inflation goes down over 2% and we didn't have a recession. It's true. Unemployment rate is increasing. And I know he says, you know, over the last century, um, you know, it's still going to be relatively low. He's sugarcoating it, guys. He's sugarcoating it. Who's to say that we're going to be at 4% in 2024, but we're not going to go way up into some crazy number before that? Like, what happens if all of a sudden consumer demand decelerates so bad because they, uh, let's back this up. What happens if supply shock changes as they're raising rates and demand is slowing and we're having decelerated earnings while companies have glut and they're, they're, they're speeding up the layoffs so damn fast that now people are making homes, you're getting foreclosures, you're taking out mate and credit markets, real estate markets, capital market, you're taking out so much at one time so fast. What if unemployment in 2023 shoots up to like 10, 11, 12% or eight, nine, 10%, whatever, and then they come down to four because they have to volker our, our arses. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. This is shifty, guys. I'm not liking it. Okay. Um, look, uh, unemployment rate is increasing, which is really what they want to slow consumer. Real estate is next. Um, the Fed said we base our data. Okay, I've already kind of gone through all that. I already, I already went through all that. So look, um, let's see here. So soft landing, no. Recession, yes. Going down further, most likely. We are at major levels on the weekly, um, like EMAs. That would be for all indexes, like Bitcoin, NASDAQ, SPY. Um, really big, uh, big deal. We break down past that. We could be coming down another 20% or so on these indexes. Um, yeah, this is... You know, this is, this is just bad guys. I mean, so what I'm doing is, I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, I sold, I sold everything yesterday and that, um, when it was going up at the very end of the day, I was, I sold, I took everything that was profitable. I had some stuff that was red, made it to the profit in that rally. And then like literally one minute before the close, I just sold. Um, I didn't even mess with after hours. I was like, oh, I'm fine to just get my money back in some. Um, and I had already sold all my greens previously when we did this. I'll show you where. Um, when this happened, I made a video. It was a couple of videos back. We were right here. We were just starting to come off this blue candle. And I said, guys, pivot point. We got to get out. I told you what I was going to do in that video. I said, I'm going to sell all my longs. And then I'm going to, you know, we were right here. Look how much has come down since I made that video. And I said, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and sell all my longs and I'm going to buy all of these. And I told you which ones. And look at this. This is 18.58%. This has been going, these kind of numbers, look, 18.074, 14.89, 3. Point. It's been doing that 
four out of the last five days, these kind of gains. These, this is what I was saying. Sell your longs off the pivot and then go inverse leverage, triple leverage on the bear side to the downside directionally. Okay. And that's, that played out well. But I still do have six different stocks that were red that I was thinking, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna hold these and I'm going to hold them for a long time. And if I do and they go back just to where they were, I'm going to have a lot of money, which is true if they go back. But again, every time I hold, I just get burned. So it's like, I guess you just have to wait it out. Uh, if you know, because I didn't put stops on those. OK, so I just got to wait it out. And it's true, like I have SoFi and I have a lot of it and it's so freaking low right now. If it goes back up to all time highs, it's like hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit for me. So, and I have a couple others like that. They're all down right now and I'd like to get out of them, but I can't get out of them on a down day. And the only way I can get out of them is on a super big green day and then putting four or five X into it lower my percentage into momentum and springboard out. And if it doesn't springboard me out all the way to green and I'm at a little loss, a little less than I am now, it'd still be worth getting the cash out to safety. Um, look, guys, if you notice the body and wick is below this line, I mean, <laughs> so we have crossed this one, 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 and now this one. And I told you guys, and I've been saying for a long time, that this is where I think it's going to go. But after the Fed speech, I might revise that. I think it's possible. I'm just, I just tell you straight up, like, truth on this, this deal here. Um, I think it could go lower. Um, I think this will be a big support right here. But... You know, look, I'm just telling you straight up, I, I, I sold everything in the green. I am literally doing back on the minutes, not on the daily, not on the hourly, back on the minutes. I'm back in my December, January methods. I am straight scalping with rules in and out. I told all the guys, I was like, look, here's the deal. Sell your longs, scalp the inverses into momentum. You know how people uh, pair with uh, currencies and like, Forex or foreign exchanges, and then also crypto. Well, I pair with algos and indexes on stocks. Okay, so I, on this computer that you can't see, I have all the indexes um, tick for tick intraday, and I have them all on all on one area where I can see them all like going down, up, like I see all that. So I'm I'm also watching the charts on this screen, the one that you can see, and you know usually when when they start to move, they'll all move together usually, but not always, and. I will use that and my, my indicators and rules and conditions, but I'll do it on the minute time frame, in and out, you know, just and and trade it. And it's been successful doing that. I mean, I did that all day and I told the guys, I was like, guys, you could trade a bear market. In a bear market, the volatility is so sick to the upside and downside, like it swings so hard, like it's like a trader's dream. It's like it's like surfing Waimea if you're like a big surfer. You're surfing the biggest clouds. Um but I mean, I'm, I'm speaking as if you are an advanced trader and you know what you're doing. Okay. If you don't, then, you know, just hold through it and, uh, or, uh, just don't, just don't be buying a bunch of stuff long unless you're like going to be holding for many years. If you're holding for many years and you have patience and you're not going to have a heart attack or something or get really worked up with the with you know watching it go down every day then that's a whole different story okay i'm just talking about trading in and out like this market using the fear and the extreme volatility to my advantage um i don't have a lot of stocks open because i sold all my greens and my reds are red right now i mean they they went down today uh which is thursday and i'm not pleased about it but um I will find a way out and I'm glad I don't have 20 stocks or 30 or 40. I just have um, these last six. And, um, you know, it was good that yesterday there was that rally because I was able to get out of a few. I actually got out of Tesla um, right there at the very end when it kind of peaked. I literally got out within 25 cents of its um, peak yesterday. So I was glad about that. And and I had thought, you know, just a couple of days before that, I was like, this is a good price. I'm mean, down in the 600s, you know, but... I was profitable. It was right about 700, I think, is where I sold it. And uh, 699, 700, something like that. And, um, 
You know, I just wanted to de-risk. That's what it is. Right now, we're in such a risky environment and it's so dangerous. I just wanted to de-risk, sell, get my money to the side. It's better for me if I have 100% of my money to the side and then I can come in and just snipe one, two, three trades, you know, a day and move it back to the side. I, it's not, it's not, it's too dangerous to hold because um, everything is like gapping up and gapping down, gapping up. It's like so volatile. It's crazy. So look, I'm not going to make this a long video because it takes too long to like render and upload and, you know, export and all that stuff. So I'm going to say thank you. I'm selling my stuff. That was a major signal to Wall Street. Expect a lower leg. Um, you know, we want to trade it. I'll teach you how to trade it. If you come in the Discord, you get the courses, the one-on-one -on -one coaching, my alerts, and the community is really cool. A lot of people are talking in the Jedi area, which you will not see when you first come in. You see it when you first up when you upgrade and you it opens up the Discord. But come on in if you want to upgrade, go to subscriptions. It's 99 bucks a month. Super worth it. I'm in there talking constantly with everybody. And everybody else is too doing charts and we're all talking about you know ideas and whatnot. So come in there and um come and say hi and i appreciate you watching to the end welcome to the wheelhouse